Podcasting is more than just talking. It's listening. BSing with Bob Schmidt. It's BS with Bob Schmidt and the podcast featuring Dr. Tommy Watson this week. Dr. Inspiration, he's uh, America's leading expert on turning transitions into success from homeless to living out of a trunk to doctor and successful entrepreneur. Dr. Tommy Watson and I have had conversation over the last probably three, four years just talking about different things on my radio show. And now that we're doing podcasts, I want to focus a little bit more, Tommy, this time around on entrepreneurship because I know we've talked about education in the past. We've talked a little bit about, you know, you're growing up on the rough side or the wrong side of the tracks in Denver. Um, yes. How did you take that, the, you know, basically dealt a crap hand and turn that into becoming a doctor and then to become a successful entrepreneur. Bob, thanks again for having me. It's always a pleasure to connect with you and I, I love the work you're doing. Uh, you know what, um, it was probably about eight years ago. Um, I was on a flight headed to Charlotte, North Carolina. I was a, a school principal at the time and I was reading the book Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. And in the book, there's a section there called 10,000 Hours. And it talked about that our purposes in life will be connected to the things that we've been doing for at least 10,000 hours, which equates to about 10 years of experience. So I began to uh, wonder on this plane, three-hour plane ride, what is it that I've been doing for at least 10 years I knew probably better than anything else? And it took me back to my experiences of growing up homeless and foster homes and price centers and constantly dealing with change. And I said I wanted to uh, create a model, a business model, where I was teaching people to overcome obstacles and deal with change. And it hit me right there at that point in time that that's what I, that's what I was going to do. And I went back in, uh, to Minnesota at that time, and eight months, excuse me, six months later, I was leaving my job as a school principal in pursuit of entrepreneurship. So, you know, it, it's funny um, when we think about the things we have kind of had interactions with in life, and, you know, they can be small or menial in many situations. We don't necessarily see those things as possible opportunities to open up doors for us to have entrepreneurship um, endeavors later on, but that was certainly the case with just taking my story and some of the challenges uh, and, and trials that I faced and, and, and turning it into an, op- an opportunity to now help individuals and businesses deal with overcoming obstacles and dealing with change. It's been a, a very rewarding. Well, before we talk about the help piece, let me say this, that people hate change. You know, uh, we, we all have it in yeah. our lives, but it's one of those things that causes anticipation. I mean, people hate uh, when they think about dying, that's uh, that's up there. When they t- think about talking in front of other people, that's up there. And change falls in the top, you know, the top three, top four of things that people hate. And and you know, it, it's not popular because of, it has a lot to do with the fear of unknown. It's it's also a matter of, of leaving your comfort zone sometimes because you know uh, when you start talking about change, change pushes you to to do something different. But I think it's important for people to know, even when we're dealing with. Um, fear and uncertainty, what have you, that change really serves a, a purpose. And the purpose is to, to really make us different and to alter us and, and modify us. Now, the essence of change in terms of the outcome, whether it's positive or negative, it, it, it depends solely upon our perspective in life. So if, if we go into dealing with change, which is inevitable, and look at it from a negative standpoint, uh, it becomes a self fulfilling prophecy, and the end result is going to definitely be negative versus. You know, if we channel that energy into looking at it in terms of something positive, um, the outcome will eventually become something that's positive. So a guy going from uh, from homeless to being a high school principal to deciding to leave that job to help other people uh, deal with change, what was your steps that you took in order to leave a, a, a good-paying job, leave a job that, uh, that you were good at, leave a job that people looked up to you and respected you to start doing things on your own? Yeah, and that's a great question as well. Uh, you know, one of the first things that I had to do was really get my mind ready uh, for the change. And there was a book that called um, – there was a book that someone referred me to called As a Man Thinketh, which comes from a uh, biblical scripture that talks about that no matter what it is, the outcomes in your life are going to be- depend solely upon the way you think the outcomes are going to come out. So I began reading this book on, um, called As a Man Thinketh and really just began to, to, to get my mindset to uh, to a place where – I was telling myself that when I left that job um, at the end of the year, that whatever I thought was going to happen was going to happen. So I began to um, follow um, the top 10 speakers who were successful in the industry, sign up for their newsletters, and begin to receive their strategies in terms of what they were doing to be successful. Um, I also spent a little time talking to people who weren't, weren't successful. But one of the things I found right away was that 
for many of those folks who were not successful, their stories went like this. They said, Tommy, you know what? Um, I jumped out there after leaving my job, whether it be fired or what have you, um, to become an entrepreneur. And this went wrong and that went wrong. And shortly after, I went back to my job. When I talked to those entrepreneurs who were successful, they jumped out there and they said, you know, this went wrong, that went wrong, this went wrong again, that went wrong, this went wrong, that went wrong, and it eventually worked out. So I knew going into this that I had to be looking at it from a, a learn, long-term perspective. And that the other thing that scraped my mind was um, that there was no plan B. Once I went into this thing, it was this thing is going to work no matter what. And I had to be into it uh, for the long haul, and I could not turn back to what I had left no matter what. And that's why I found a lot of those folks who had jumped out there and tried to become entrepreneurs and really weren't really all the way into it. Uh, the one with things got tough, they turned around and went back to um, being an employee, you know, which is fine in some instances. But had they stuck with it a little bit longer, the end result would have probably been quite different. You know, it's kind of funny to think about what you just said because you're saying that the people that – failed and then took failure as the only option they failed mm-hmm. as the business owner or as an entrepreneur but those that failed and learned from the failures yes. those are the ones that have been successful so you're kind of saying that failure isn't an option but it is an option absolutely and, and you want to fail because failure is learning so it was a matter of perspective in terms of how how they looked at failure because many of those individuals who, who went back to being an employer by the way they looked at failure as kind of an end result, whereas the folks who were successful looked at failure as a process, a stepping stone to the next thing. What did I learn from this? How can I get better at this? Um, how can I create other alternatives? You know, Those are some of the things that they looked at versus saying, oh, this didn't work. I'm, I'm not good at it. I failed. Um, because all those moments are learning opportunities. Dr. Tommy Watson, my guest on the BS with Bob Schmidt podcast. So uh, how do you go about helping somebody that's dealing with some of these trials and tribulations there, Tommy? Well, the, the first thing you got you to look at when it comes to change is, again, is, is, is you got to begin with the mindset and let people know that no matter where you are in life, change is inevitable. My grandmother used to say all the time that the one thing that's always been consistent is change and more change. So change is always taking place. So we have to prepare ourselves to be able to adjust and, and and monitor change as it comes. You know, sometimes change comes up on us unexpectedly. Um, I had a position where I was working a job out of college, and I got fired from it. One day I came in, and they, they said I was fired. I didn't have leadership skills, and I found myself going into this whirlwind of, now what do I do to take care of my family? It was very uncomfortable. But I also knew that going backwards and hitting rock bottom was not going to um, be okay with me. So I remember just scrambling, you know, placing up, placing my resumes and connecting with people and uh, trying to do everything I could to keep moving forward. Because one, one of the things that happens is if, when, when change takes place, if you become stagnant, you don't remain stagnant. So if you stop doing, you find yourself in a decline. So one of the best things you can do is take a moment to breathe, but then start taking steps and taking small actions to keep yourself moving forward. Uh, because again, um, when you become stagnant, you can find yourself going to places of, of anger, depression, denial, which really, you know, causes a, 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 a deep uh, decline, which is the direction you don't want to be going when it comes to change. Oh, it definitely throws you into a downward spiral, that's for sure. You mentioned yes. you mentioned rock, bot, rock bottom. Do you think that you need to hit rock bottom in order to propel yourself into success? Well, you know, I, I, I think... Uh, in some situations, it, it definitely helps others. Um, but I was in that moment, and, and, and I didn't have anything else to depend on. It, it forced me to you know, kind of come up with some creative ideas. And I actually found myself going to work at a place, Bob, that I never thought I would have been working at, especially with a college degree. I went to work at McDonald's. It became one of the most important jobs I ever had, you know, a job that taught me about entrepreneurship. But in some other situations, I believe we can create our own rock bottom. We can create a, a perceived rock bottom, you know. Um, you know, just the idea of thinking about how things, how bad things may get um, if I don't go out here and take action to find these other speakers or other individuals who are doing what it is I want to be doing, um, knowing what the current potential consequence could be could also be a, something that could propel a person into moving forward and you don't necessarily have to hit rock bottom. But um, either situation both works, but I would say uh, – the advantage probably goes to the person who can create the perceived rock bottom uh, situation in, the, in their lives and don't necessarily hit rock bottom, but use that as motivation to 
uh, take steps to move forward. You know, I really believe that the uh, the motivation piece there is huge because I, I don't know about other people, but for myself, my motivation is to continue to do better, to try to be the best podcaster that I can be, to be the best interviewer yeah. that I can be. And even though I don't have a radio job at the moment, and I probably won't ever have a radio job again because I like doing this and like we were talking about earlier about working on your own and working for yourself and to be sure. that entrepreneur and to be that entrepreneur, I wonder if other people have that same thought process, you know? Absolutely. And and for those folks who do have that same thought process, one of the best things you can do is start finding out the people who are in your industry who are doing it very, very well. And uh, remember that success leaves footprints. So for those individuals who are doing it well at a high level, uh, begin to mimic some of their behaviors. One of the fastest ways to become a champion is to model, take the uh, behaviors of a champion and begin to apply them to your own life. So begin to mimic those same behaviors you're seeing from those folks who are getting done uh, correctly can really uh, decrease your learning curve as you begin to endure and go through change. It's also helpful to be able to hear that their stories um, will include uh, really many, many moments of change. So the changes, the failures, the setbacks that you're dealing with are part of the process, and it does not have to become moments for you to uh, quit or become overly frustrated. All right, Tommy, I'm going to go and pull back from my conversations that I've had with you in the past. I know that you went to uh, University of Minnesota on a football scholarship, so I want to ask you about being a uh, a football player at such a high level like that. Uh, were you using your advice that you just gave there about pulling from some of the people that you quote looked up to as a uh, as a player to help to propel your career? Absolutely. You know, the, when I was in high school, the, the player that I used to follow uh, day in and day out was Barry Sanders. Because when I was in high school, Barry Sanders was at the University of Oklahoma State, and I would uh, mimic his routines. I tried to run the ball very similar to the way Barry Sanders ran, even though I was a big guy. I didn't take a lot of hits because I watched Barry Sanders do the same thing. My training methods were very similar. I tried to eat in a similar fashion. So Barry Sanders became, became the guy that I kind of modeled my own football career and pathway after, and it landed me a, a chance to go to the University of Minnesota, and it uh, was, was very uh, beneficial to me. Dr. Tommy Watson, my guest on the BS with Bob Schmidt podcast. So is it different between a child and, a, and an adult going through some of these changes or some of these processes? Yeah, you know, it really is. You know, because as a kid, when you're going through changes, oftentimes you have um, systems in place, you have people in place that you could probably uh, find yourself leaning on in many circumstances. Um, as an adult, and in particular as a person who may be leading the change, oftentimes you may find yourself in a situation where you are the only one who may be the breadwinner. You may be the only person who is providing direction and guidance to uh, a family. So uh, a lot of it falls on your shoulders. So again, uh, and, then, and then there's an expectation from those around you that you have to figure it out and that we're, that we're not going to endure change for a long time. So again, it becomes very, very um, essential that the learning curve um, is quickly reduced when you're an adult versus a kid. I think society gives you leeway to kind of learn and bounce back from mistakes when you're a kid, but there's an expectation when you become an adult um, that we have to kind of learn and, and bounce back from those things a lot quicker than when you were kids. Was that hard for you to notice or to deal with when you were a principal? It, you know, it, it was. Um, it, it really was because I didn't, at, at the time I was a principal, I didn't really have a lot of entrepreneurial uh, uh, friends out there. So when I jumped into the world of uh, becoming an entrepreneur, it was a matter of really scrambling to try to find and make connections with those individuals who are in the speaking, coaching, and consulting industry and really kind of learning their stories and gravitating their messages and, and uh, pulling from their principles really quickly, uh, which took a lot of time because a lot of it, you know, was encompassed of, of trying to find these individuals. Um, now I'm doing a, another piece of, of, of the journey. I'm actually working on a movie about my story. So a lot of that has been telling um, going into the film industry, again, an industry where I don't know anyone, um, but I'm trying to use smarter. So what I'm doing now is using more of my social media connections to build those relationships and, and increase my knowledge there. So, um, you know, every journey that we step in, into that may be different or causes more change is very, very important for us to begin to look around and see who we may know who may, may already be in the industry or who can connect us better in the industry and begin to do uh, our own individual research to uh, kind of help again speed up that learning curve. 
who plays Dr. Tommy Watson in the uh, in the Watson wow, movie? Wow, you know, I, I would love Denzel to play me, but he's a little bit he's a little bit aged right now. I don't know if he can put on a football uniform and run through a, a hole. <laughs> 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 you know, we've talked a little bit about football, and as a as a kid growing up, and then getting your scholarship to the University of Minnesota, uh, I'm assuming that you probably wanted to be uh, in the NFL, as do most other young kids that have that type of dream. Uh, obviously, that didn't happen. You're, uh, you know, an entrepreneur now. Uh, how how did that happen? Well, it, it was devastating when I experienced my back injury my junior year. I just came off of a spring. Um, season where I was the MVP of the football team. Uh, things were looking very promising in terms of my, my, my athletic career. I was in the best shape uh, ever was in college and suddenly had a back injury that, that you know, ended my career just like that. And I remember going through, you know, all, all the all the phases of emotions. I mean, I was in denial, uh, thinking to myself, this can't be the end of it. And I became angry. And then, um, you know, definitely chaos kind of settled in my mind. And then there was some moments of depression. I'm saying, okay, now what am I going to do? This is the only thing I knew um, for many, many years. And this was the only goal I had was to get to the NFL. And it began to, um, once I got to a place where I said, you know what, I can't change this. I began to open up my eyes to other avenues. And there was this readiness to kind of begin to take place to say, okay, all right, well, what's next? What else can I do? What else do I love doing? And I, and I came to the conclusion, I love helping people. So, and once I began to get to that place, I began to have this uh, reemergence where I was uh, excited to move forward just as though I was excited for those same football games. I now wanted to go into those schools. I got the butterflies when I got to the door of the school. When I was getting ready to go in there and talk to some kids about preparing for their futures. I had that same excitement and, and, and thrill that I had when I was getting ready to go into Michigan and Penn State to uh, pounce on guys on the football field. So. I've been very fortunate to find, you know, an, an industry that um, gives me that same level of excitement, but it, but it took some time to get there, though, you know. Uh, I had to really allow myself to go through the uh, various emotional phases and at the end, you know, realizing that, hey, you know, I can't change what's been done. What I can change is how I move forward. Being dealt that huge of a, a disappointment and a blow, that had to suck. I got to ask this, though. So with that happening to you, did you ever want to fall back to the – the way that you were raised, you know, go live on the streets, go experience drugs, go get, high, you know what I mean? Did you want to go back that to was, what that you was grew never, up with? Never an option. No? Never an option for me. That was never. Uh, once, once I decided uh, in third grade that I was not going to join the gang and, and got involved in sports, that lifestyle was never, ever, ever going to be an option for me. Uh, even though I lived in poverty, I always told myself this was not going to be the place that I was going to land and, and be forever. So um, that was never an option for me. My options were only going forward, only going forward, only going forward. That lifestyle was too devastating. I got a chance to witness the damage and destruction that lifestyle did to my parents and my siblings. So uh, never, never, ever contemplated for once um, going to that lifestyle at all. Good for you. Uh, can anybody do it, Tommy? Can anybody, be, so. can anybody I, be successful? Absolutely. I believe any and everyone can do it, but not many people do do it because of the situation that we, we talked about earlier where – Many people face adversity. The tendency is to quit versus looking at adversity as an opportunity to learn something and say, okay, how can I go at it again tomorrow? And it's okay sometimes that, you know, when you have to bump your head to say, all right, I need to take a break and come back at this thing again tomorrow. But you want to come back at it though. But a lot of people simply quit. They pick up their ball and they go home. They don't continue to uh, ask questions in terms of finding out alternative ways to like, get around this obstacle or go over it or go under it. They simply quit and take the ball and go home. So for those individuals who stay in the park and continue to kind of fight it out and seek other opportunities to become better in, in the industry they are that, that they're in, um, take advice to find mentors and what have you, they tend to do a lot better. Is there ever a time, though, that when you say, okay, enough's enough, I've, I've done it the same way every single day for – 35 years i'm done i'm gonna try yeah. some, i'm gonna try something i yeah. gotta give up i can't do this every single day actually i think and that's part of the change the change uh process i think we should each each and every day we should be asking ourselves how can we get better and sometimes asking ourselves how can we get better shines a light that you know we're, we're, we're growing we're developing and the place we may have been 20 years ago may not necessarily be the place that um is meant for us to be at this particular time. Maybe the place we were 20 years ago was simply preparation for you to be at a uh, new place today. 
So as we take those skill sets and recognize that those experiences, those relationships, and all those things we gained over the last 20 years have been very, very valuable to us, and now they can be transferred over to this new industry, we begin to look at it quite differently. And there's a great uh, Chinese proverb that says, uh, when the winds of change blow, some people build walls, others build windmills. So again, the, wheels of ch- the winds of change are going to come. So we can either embrace them or we can kind of st- stay still and become stagnant. But we can begin to you know, open our wings up and begin to ask questions in terms of how can I get better every day? It opens up our eyes to new, new possibilities. Tommy, how can an entrepreneur get over that, though? Because I think a lot of times that, you know, it's like, hey, I want to do it this way, and it's not really working my way, and okay, there's winds of change, obviously, but I really want to just do it. <laughs> Are, yeah, I just really want to do it this way. <laughs> absolutely. And again, it goes back to, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan that people need to have hope in order to accomplish goals and dreams. And when it comes to hope, there's two aspects that are absolutely critical when it comes to having hope. So the first one is you have to have willpower. So there has to be an internal drive, an internal want to to do something. Um, But that drive and internal will can only go so far. The next piece you have to have, you have to have what they call way power. So you have to have role models, uh, mentors, a blueprint to get to where it is you're trying to get to. I think that's where a lot of people fall short. So investing the time to find mentors, getting books, researching your industry, researching the pathway uh, to success, taking those stories that have been done uh, before you and, and learning the ins and outs of those stories can be very, very helpful when you're on your pathway and journey to try and experience the same thing. Because oftentimes when we go on that pathway, uh, we often feel like we're alone in what, we're, what we've experienced is an isolated situation, but we find that for many entrepreneurs, uh, the pathway has been very similar to many of them. There's been many failures and setbacks and the pathway is to keep going, keep bouncing back from those setbacks. You know, you mentioned blueprint, and uh, a lot of successful people have their goals, and they write down their goals on a daily basis. And it's kind of funny, my uh, my oldest son just moved from a group of buddies to live on his own. And at the same time, I was cleaning up my garage, and I had a, a whiteboard. And he said, Dad, can I have that? And my wife and I went to his apartment the other day, and on his uh wall he had written down on the whiteboard monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday then he wrote down things that he has to do then he wrote down did i read did i write down my goals did i look at my goals did i and i I looked at that i kind of had a smile on my face i'm like dude that's fantastic you're 23 years old and you're knocking it out of the park yes absolutely because what we see we become so he's learning he's learning the habits of uh uh recreate that that visual before him all the time, and, and he's setting those goals and making sure he's, he's, he has a checklist of uh, going after those things daily. That's that's the that's the way you accomplish those goals and dreams. Yeah, good but, for him. But I mean, to see that in the, to see that at a young man, you know, to me that just uh, that's that says a lot about the the young man that I believe he's going to become. You know, absolutely, and kudos for you and your wife for you know instilling that in him. I'm pretty sure he got that from somebody else. <laughs> well, your wife, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, wife, <laughs> absolutely there. So, uh, as a as a as a speaker, as a coach, as a consultant, um, a lot of people in your in your profession and and what you're doing, have written a book. I, I got to ask yes. about your book. Uh, the Resilience of Champions was a book that um, won talks a lot about my, uh, my, my, my journey through McDonald's Corporation and how I went there to McDonald's after experiencing uh, losing my job and having very low expectations in terms of what McDonald's could, could provide for me, but it ended up being one of the best experiences I ever uh, participated in. You know, So I took the learning habits that I adopted from McDonald's Corporation, incorporated them into this book, Resilience of Champions, and began to tell the stories of myself and other entrepreneurs like Oprah Winfrey, uh, Bill Gates, um, and a lot of number of other entrepreneurs in terms of set, setting the stage for how they became um, change agents and champions of resiliency by enduring the change process as they went through uh, life and overcoming obstacles. Was it hard to write the book? You know, it was. You know, and at the time I was writing the book, I remember I was going through a divorce. I just moved to Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, my family was struggling. And there was a lot of stuff that I was just dealing with on the outside, but this book kept me going because there were, I was talking about resilience and how, you know, resilient people bounce back from challenges and changes. And this was coming out of me at, at, at one of the most critical 
point in time. You know, one of the one of the things I talk about in the book was that resilient people in tough times they will find a way to shine the the spotlight on what's going right. So sometimes, you know, when things are going uh, uh, challenge, becoming challenging in our lives, we we have a tendency to focus on everything that's going negative. But resilient people will hone in on the one thing that may be going well and ride that thing out. And I remember going through this day after day after day, uh, you know, really struggling with it and, and finding the one thing that I enjoyed doing, which was writing and trying to inspire people and just kind of holding on to that 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 thought until it got me through um, this very, very challenging time that I was going through at the time. So this book was birthed out of um, pain and, and uh, uh, challenge. You know, you talk about inspiration, Tommy. Who inspires you? You know, right now, it's my, my kids, my family, my my new wife inspires me. Um, you know, it's, you know, we're we're working together as entrepreneurs. Uh, my kids, you know, just seeing them uh, going after their goals and dreams every day, knowing that I have to be better. And I have a twelve year old son who's almost as tall as me, so I know I have to stay on the grind every day to get bigger. <laughs> He's going to be trying to <laughs> out top me soon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm pretty like I'm six two and my uh my every one of my children is shorter than I am by about e oh, really? much yeah so <laughs> <laughs> so I I know exactly what you're saying as they get as yeah. they're getting older I'm like uh oh uh oh and then they just plateau and, and I'm like voice, all right voice is getting deeper there and everything so I, I got to <laughs> yes. really I'm in the gym and everything yeah. <laughs> I always, I always like to ask my podcast guests uh, about a talent. So, what's your most useless talent? Useless talent? Yeah, uh, wow. You know, that's a great question. I am a horrible golfer, <laughs> and you know, even saying that I'm a golfer is a, is a, is a stretch. It's, it's horrible. It's horrible. I mean, you, you, you would never probably want to go out there uh, with me because I, you're probably still laughing at my game all day, every day. So. That's a that's a useless talent that I have at this particular time that I need some help on. So if, if you have any skill sets or direction in that area, uh, definitely let me know. I need some help in that area. And you know what? Actually, if you if we ever get a chance to meet, you and I should go golfing because it would be the world's longest golf match because I, too, am a horrible golfer. <laughs> so we, we may be out there all week long then, huh? <laughs> Well, they they put like, a bunch of bad habits. <laughs> would, I'll tell you what, that would be uh, that would be horrible. Oh. <laughs> so, being a speaker and being an entrepreneur, and uh, well, being a guy that presents in front of a lot of things, what makes you nervous? Uh, what makes me nervous? Um, what makes me nervous? You know what? I don't get nervous. Oftentimes, it's more so excitement. Um, the times I've gotten nervous is when I've had to deliver new content. So. Um, the content I've been delivering for the last few, several years has been around self-motivation and then resiliency has been a new one for me. Um, I'm also doing some things around uh, teamwork. So typically when I'm doing something new, uh, it begins, it, it, it kind of creates a little bit of anxiety in, me in terms of, of uh, how is this going to be received from the, the folks I'm coaching or speaking to or uh, the coach, the folks that I'm uh, mentoring, how is it going to be received? So uh, that's always a little um, agonizing in the beginning there. You'd mentioned uh, self motivation. How can we, as business owners, as entrepreneurs, as marketers, as listeners of this podcast, how can we self motivate ourselves to get that first goal done, or to get the you know the the last goal on the sheet done? Absolutely. I think there's three things you can do. The first thing is you got to stay true to who you are. Stay true to your goals. Stay true to your values. Identify those those things that are important to you. Who's important to you in your life? Uh, the second thing is to have a vision for what it is you want to accomplish. Um, I'm a big fan of vision boards. I encourage, well, me and my family, we do vision boards every year. I encourage others that I come across um, to do vision boards. I was working with a group of students here last week in Omaha, Nebraska, who were struggling, living in, in poverty. And I do this every year in Omaha, Nebraska. And it's, it's great to see when these kids do vision boards, how they just be, how their eyes open up, the, the level of excitement, the energy they get. These all, all these kids talk about going to college and, all these other great things in the midst of currently living in poverty. So vision boards are very, very powerful and has you, gives you a chance to see beyond uh, your current circumstances. And then lastly, you got to be able to create a, um, um, a, a cheerleader inside of you. So you got to create a voice uh, and some um, uh, verbal affirmations around you that, you know, just kind of cheer you on to, to go on to your goals. And those are the three aspects of self-motivation right there um, that we, all of us need. So uh, if you do those three things, your, your chances of uh, accomplishing goals and dreams, 
increase tremendously. So what words do you tell yourself before you do anything? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's one of my biggest ones. Dr. Tommy Watson, thanks for being a part of the uh, the BS with Bob podcast. How do people reach out and find you and find your book and find out more information on how we can be inspired and how we can be resilient and how we can, you know, work toward becoming a better person? You know, um, it's always a pleasure being on with you, Bob. They go to my website at www.tawatson.com. Uh, I have two books out. One is called The Resilience of Champions. The other one is called A Face of Courage, with de- which details my life growing up in Denver in poverty and out of foster homes and crisis centers and motel rooms and being homeless and what have you. And then going on, like we talked about before, to play football for the University of Minnesota. Um, and then be on the lookout for a, a new movie that I'm working on called Resilient. Um, you know, it, it's in the, the very early stages, but I would love to uh, bring that into the lives of a lot of folks here in the future and, and bring them hope and inspiration. The BSing with Bob Schmidt podcast is brought to you by Orange Computer. Find them online at orangecomputerlax.com. This has been another podcast for hire.com production.